Hello everyone and welcome to my very first video in Kerbal Space Program 2. This is Early Access version 0.1.0.0, which should be a warning to all of us. I made many videos in Kerbal Space Program 1, so I am very interested in this working out and being a great game, but it is not feature complete right now. It is in alpha state and there are many bugs, and so we must give feedback. And so that is what I intend to do. I tend I I am a playtester at this point. I am very much a playtester. And I just came off of a four hour live stream where I tried out the game and I'll tell you how that went as we go along. But let's just start with the settings first and I'll tell you my specs. Uh, I have an i5 12600K processor running at maximum at 4.9 gigahertz. And I have an RTX 2070 and also 64 gigabytes of RAM because of KSP1 and all the mods I run. Um, so. I, I will, I'll, I'll probably allow revert and quick load and all that, but um, maybe we'll link, uh, no, I'll leave off the stock vessels for now. Unbreakable joints. I'm going to leave that off, but we may want to reconsider that soon. Um, infinite propellants and infinite electricity, of course not. Um, I've set max patches to five. If I could type in seven, I would. Uh, skip launch sequence. Um, so in the beginning when you press spacebar initially, it'll do a countdown and all that and you can set that to off. We'll show that once and then you can speed up that process with spacebar. Now one of the frustrations I had was that I can't map my joystick to this and uh, I can do... Okay, first of all when I try and put the stick up, it, it very quickly does up and down and so I have to be careful um, so pitch up, pitch down, okay, I can get it like that. However, the twist rudder doesn't read, and so I can't do y'all left and right. And the roll messed up as well. And during my live stream, I killed Jeb. And I killed Jeb because it doesn't really like... It doesn't really like the whole joystick thing. So, joystick mapping. I don't recommend it. <laughs> um, Otherwise, those are the mappings, and we'll have to get used to a few things around here. But for now, it's okay. Set the audio to that. The show vessel name's on, of course. Temperature gauge is off. Textile uh, size medium. And for graphics, very important, I'm in windowed mode. I'm not actually at 1080p because of the windowed mode. It's a little bit smaller. Um, I've got anti-aliasing off right now. And we'll just keep it off and we'll see how it looks. And an anastropic filtering on, though it doesn't have the levels. Um, and then quality preset high, even though I don't hit the recommended setting, the uh, whatchamacallit, specs, uh, we will try it. Okay, and I'm going to have a new campaign. I had a default one. I'm going to call this, uh, well, we'll just call it YouTube for now. You'll note that there's no career mode or science mode. There is just sandbox. Um, as far as difficulty is concerned, uh, rocket scientist is apparently no reverts and quick loads. Uh, from my experience, I think we should allow reverts. <laughs> um, this might be important. As comnet, we're not gonna do probes. We're gonna send Kerbals out, so probably won't come into play. Uh, the flag, I haven't found the flag folder. I don't know. Uh, things with Kerbal Space Program 2 are packaged differently than in Kerbal Space Program 1. There is no game data folder. I have no idea how to mod the game. And I also have no idea how to add flags. It does add data to the app data folder on your computer. Unlike Kerbal Space Program 1, which did not, uh, it has stuff stored in the app data folder, including the settings file. So, whereas we used to have a different settings file for if we had multiple installs of Kerbal Space Program, uh, there is only one settings file. So if you did have multiple installs, they'd all look at that same settings file. Um, it's possible that the flag folder is also in app data, but I didn't see it. Uh, so we'll just go with the default flag. And we have agency colors. I'm going to go with... Uh, uh, base, red, and uh, purple accent. Okay. 
and set agency colors. First time user experience. I'm not going to do that because I did do that during the live stream already. Uh, but there wasn't that much added, I don't think. So yeah, let's just proceed. So as I mentioned, I killed Jeb because of the joystick thing. And what happened was, even though I thought I had mapped at least the pitch in yaw correct, I used the joystick uh, roll axis, what would normally on an airplane be the roll axis for yaw. Um, even though I had the joystick still, it the rocket flopped. And it was the joystick mapping that caused that. So, uh, so that's a bit of a rub and um, basically means I'm not going to be too interested in doing airplanes right now. Uh, so we have the VAB training center tracking station and launch pad. And we have four launch pads, two runways, and a boat launch. Um, from what I saw during the live stream, the water physics aren't exactly functional. So I don't know about the boat launch. Maybe we'll try that some other time. But I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna. I was thinking of doing a landing at Duna. And but I'm also thinking that that might be way too ambitious. Uh, but but okay, let's let's try and line up with the Duna window. And so this is what the tracking station looks like. It feels a little bit confining with the two things on the side there, but. Uh, we are going to just line up with Duna. So it's a 45 degree angle between Kerbin and Duna. And I'm gonna see if I uh, duplicate an issue that I had during the live stream. I went to Duna during the live stream, but only Duna orbit. We weren't trying to land on it. I sent Val out and Val captured. It was all right. And then when we tried to get back home to Kerbin, we had uh, uh, the return burn done and we had the periapsis around the sun touching Kerbin's orbit. But then when we exited Duna's SOI, uh, the orbit changed. The orbit changed and we ended up with an orbit higher than Duna's orbit, in between Duna's orbit and Drez, and we had to send a rescue mission out. And that was a whole other story. <laughs> so the rescue mission caused problems. But we ended up rescuing Val, so that was all right. At least we didn't let Val perish. So, vehicle assembly building. I'm not going to use the lander camera, we're just going to land our pod directly. I was not expecting that color. Okay, so when you pick your agency colors, it's going to paint your rocket like that. I was not informed of that, <laughs> so, okay. Uh, I guess that's all right. It's not the worst thing that could have happened. Um, uh, utility parachute. Um, so, Mark 16. Oh yes, this is going to be eccentric. So, thermal. We have the heat shields, of course. Uh, I don't think we need it. I don't know if there's any atmospheric heating at all. So, But we'll add it just for um, formality's sake might underdo the ablator, especially since I'm planning to land on Duna with it. Maybe we should send an engineer. I don't know. We don't have engineers. Okay, right. We have that. We have, we, the Kerbals don't have jobs. So the, I don't even, I don't think we can repack parachutes or something like that. Not sure about that, but. Uh, coupling. So small is one, what was 1.25 meter parts. I'm regretting the the purple and red now, but that is um, the raised airspace colors, so yeah, it is. <laughs> um, so as far as a lander is concerned, we've got these fuel tanks. It's got these favorites, if you want to have favorites, but we don't have favorites right now. And all the regular fuel tanks, the LFO fuel tanks, are now Mephalox fuel tanks. And I wanted a spark engine. It so, looks sort of like the Joker, though. <laughs> or some sort of clown thing. Okay. Now, they're a little bit coy about information around here. Like, it says Delta V, but it doesn't tell you whether that's the vacuum Delta V or the sea level Delta V. But the presumption is that that's va vacuum Delta V. And as far as the thrust-weight ratio is concerned... Um, 
that appears to be the vacuum thrust weight ratio right now. So, yeah. Uh, that's not a whole lot of delta V, to be honest. And we're not getting great thrust weight ratio either when it comes to Duna. So... We may want a bigger tank for the lander. I'm hoping that this can sit down on Duna. And then ascend again. And then come back home. <laughs> this might be asking for a lot here. I think we only need two sparks, not so many. There is a lot of wobbliness from what I saw. This is old time Kerbal stuff, folks. Uh, you better expect old time Kerbal wobbliness. There's no auto strutting. Now, you can activate that thing in the settings menu that will make things more rigid. But we're not going to do that initially, just to demonstrate the situation here. So that's the decoupler, and then we want a fairing around that. And I hope it'll fit. There is no 1.875 meter parts, much to my own dismay. I like the 1.875 meter parts. And then it sometimes doesn't like your fairing. But you can... oops, and sometimes that happens. And But you can sort of tweak it in and out like that. And it does snap. Okay, it seems to like that. We'll just go with that. Okay, so that is the planned stage for setting down on Mars. Getting back into orbit around... Uh, not Mars, Duna. Getting into orbit around Duna and then returning home. And I'm going to test something. Somebody said that the Poodle didn't decouple properly. So I'm going to test that. We're going to try the Poodle. It's a little bit OP, I think. And for the breakdown Delta V stats, you have to press that little arrow there. That doesn't show the individualized thrust weight ratio. It just shows that for the whole assembly, not, not each part. But that'll probably do more than we need. We can probably complete orbit with this stage even, and then transfer. Okay, and then I want a decoupler, so I'll just take a normal decoupler. This is sort of a very standard sort of rocket. We'll try boosters as well. But I think... Yeah. I think I'm going to want the skipper and then boosters. Very sort of standard sort of feel. Maybe a mainsail, just for the heck of it. No, the skipper should be fine. Here I wish we had the thrust weight ratio. Oh, well, I will wish we had the thrust weight ratio for each stage because I'm going to put the boosters on, and I would really like to know what the thrust weight ratio is after the boosters go off. Now, we could cal calculate that manually, but it's a little bit difficult because, of course, the skipper's going to have depleted some fuel in that time. I'll just use these. The traditional. Four boosters? The thumpers? Now... Presumably that's telling us the sea level thrust weight ratio now. Thumpers don't need separatrons. So I'm not trying to tax the game right now. We're just building a very normal rocket. One thing, one feature that we used to have that we don't seem to have right now is that while we can reduce the solid fuel in the solid fuel boosters, we can't adjust the thrust of them. So yeah, that's not available in the context menu. It has a much more early Kerbal Space Program feel to it, having played that. I bought Kerbal Space Program 1 in version 0 0.18, though I did play the earlier versions because uh, those were available as well, and I just to uh, try it out, especially from 0 0.7.3 to 0 0.13. I tried those. I might do another video about them, just to remind people about that whole era of KSP-1. 
got those launch clamps. Let's uh, see, I press shift and click to try and move the whole thing, but that didn't work. Maybe there is another key, but I haven't found it yet. Oh, this doesn't seem quite enough delta V. And then we have to have solar panels, probably. Or some way of generating power. We didn't really lose power much during the live stream. Could probably just put these little guys. Except I don't want to block the hatch. And it should be fine with just them on the bottom bit. They'll be tagging along for everything but re-entry. I'm going to try it without struts, but I'm tempted to strut the boosters. The default vehicle name is Fly Safe. But we'll, we'll call this Joker. Because <laughs> it's sort of, yeah. Or maybe, maybe Jester. Oh, and auto save those steps. I don't know if this is going to be enough to do a whole Duna thing, but we might as well try it out. And uh, since I started a new save, Jeb is still here, though they put Bill in first these days, I guess. Okay, Jeb it is. This is the curl manager now. Alright. Well, let's see what goes wrong. So, here is our proud rocket on the pad. It's nice looking and everything. Now, we probably want those after we light the engines. It's not very wiggly now. That's good. There are some. There have been some times when it's just wiggling on the pad quite a lot. The interface takes some getting used to. Alright. Spacebar. And then they have a countdown. If you press spacebar again, you can skip the countdown. Well, we've got water deluge effects and everything. Okay, and launch. We're going up. It's actually remarkably stable right now. This is surprisingly not wobbly compared to when I was streaming. This is not the exact same thing I made though. So it could just be some of the joints are different. Okay, booster set. Ah, uh, this has too little thrust weight ratio at this point. We need bigger boosters. Well, we'll assess. We'll try to get to orbit, assess what we can, and then adjust. It's doing an admirable job of holding now. The space center looks very spiffy. It's very. Got a lot of water around it. It's really fancy. And two runways now. I don't know if there's the island runway. There's the island. There's, there's an island there. Pretty sure that the poodle stage is not going to have enough oomph to try and get to orbit. Okay, separation. And ignition. Now somebody had trouble separating the uh, getting the decouplers to separate from the poodle, but I don't seem to have that problem. Again, uh, knowing the stage time really would help here, but I guess we'll take what we can get. We'll make orbit with enough on this stage to transfer, but I don't know how far into the rest of the mission we're going to get just like that. I think our margins are too tight. So we are fizz warping now. Well, that's a blank notification there for some reason. I don't know what that notification was supposed to be. Hmm. And I can't close it. So, there, there have been various glitches. <laughs> there have been rockets breaking apart for no apparent reason. There have been notifications like this. Uh, sometimes when things, when it wants to notify us, sometimes it'll have like three, four copies of the same notification. 
Yeah. I can't get rid of it. <laughs> oh well. Hopefully at some point it'll have uh, something to tell us actually. Okay. Well, I think we don't have quite enough. So I'm going to up the boosters. We're going to revert this one. That all felt fairly mild. Kickbacks. Let's go with the kickbacks. I could do liquid boosters though. Let's do liquid boosters. The kickbacks are nice and all, but... Let's just go very traditional style. No, I'll just put swivels. Does it say eight? Oh, how did we get those there? That's weird. Um, I don't think we have what? What just happened? Okay, the coupler. Symmetry did not go the way I expected it to go. Okay, now it looks better. Ah, uh, not enough thrust weight ratio though. Why don't we have a combo? We'll have we love we'll swivels and kickbacks. No, and yeah, well, why not? Sure, let's test this thing out. We'll have swivels and kickbacks, and it'll look horrible. Well, now it's getting Delta Two vibes. Though, sort of different. I don't even know where to put the launch clamps. You suppose this will be stable? The poodle stage used to have more than a thousand. Why does it only have one thousand now? Who knows? Let's try this. Okay, yeah, we've got some wiggliness here. We might have wanted to strut those boosters. But it's still not as wiggly as some of the launches that I had during the live stream, so I'm feeling pretty good about it. Alright. Uh, ignition. Well, and we'll skip countdown. And launch. Good old-timey wiggle, but not, not nearly as bad as I had it just a little while ago, so it's pretty good. I'm literally, during this recording, feeling a lot better about the game compared to when I was live streaming. Because it was wiggling all over the place during the live stream. I mean, I, I didn't even try to move it. I just kept it pointed straight up. Oh, that's a little bit of anti-aliasing anti is necessary right there. Um, I just kept the pointed straight up and it would wiggle. It was rough. I don't know why. But yeah, things are looking up now. Okay, booster set. Hey, and they're even the right boosters. <laughs> I think this time we ended up with overwhelming power, but we'll see. Yeah, booster set. Yeah, we have overwhelming power. I think that notification was supposed to be space or something, but I don't know. Okay, we're getting a bit high here. Um, that's a lot of Delta V left. I'll try and bring it closer to orbit, but we'll deorbit this stage, of course. Okay, we'll separate that off and poodle. Full poodle. Poodle power. And orbit. Part ineffective. Lack of stellar exposure. That's another one of those notifications. Every time your solar panel is going to go into the dark, it's going to give you that one. Alright, but we've made orbit. 
We've got 2,488 in the poodle stage, which is more than I was expecting. And now we set target for Duna. Now, you, uh, in Kerbal Space Program 1, you can right click on the orbit and select that as the target. Uh, here, right now, you can't do that. So that's a minor thing. But it means that quite often we might accidentally click the moon or Minmus when we're trying to select target. We're also a little bit late as far as the transfer it looks like. That's straight out. This is how it displays your exit out of the SOI. <laughs> well, that's pretty good right there. 426 is something that we will probably want to do at a mid, uh, fix at a mid course adjustment anyway. Let's see. A uh, minor thing is that if you right click, first of all, trying to find that uh, information is. I never know exactly where to click. Okay, if you right click, it'll stay there, right? But if you then click on your maneuver node, see it's still there. You click on the maneuver node, it goes away. So that's another thing. And we don't have the little gizmo that was added in Curl Space Program 1 eventually, the one in the corner that helps you tweak it while taking a look at it. The SOI change concentric circles are a little bit annoying. Okay, the rest I'm gonna fix in the mid-course adjustment. Um, instead of the tilde key, in order to get back to your craft, if you need to, it's home. You need to refocus. But that can be mapped. If you wanna change that back. Don't know why it's trying to show right there. It's weird. I guess that's the Space Center, but it's not the most distinct icon ever. Maybe it's some debris near the Space Center or something. Okay, we better turn though. We pause the game. Five messages for game paused. And then five for unpaused. Sometimes it's three. It's not consistently five. It seems to read duplicate imp input a whole lot. Okay, off we go. Now it's wobbling a bit, but it's okay. I did get lag in the VAB when I had way over 100 parts. Uh, the max we had was like a 180 part vehicle. And I could launch it. But the game didn't like it very much. It wobbled a lot. But I don't know what the cause of that exactly was. So, normal fizz warp, you don't need to press a special key right now, it looks like. Stop. Okay, well we did that about as exactly as it showed us, but it doesn't count down the Delta V as such. It does have this bar here. It doesn't exactly count down the Delta V like the old system. And we need to get rid of that because it's going to mess up. And it looks like we need to do a little bit more. Okay, well, let me see. Create a maneuver. A lot of the frustration has been happening in the map view. Just getting used to some of this maybe, but some of it is just a little bit more frustrating compared to the refined state of Kerbal Space Program 1 right now. Well, we have a Duna encounter there. Again, the dotted lines, I don't know sometimes. Oh, Ike encounter. We don't want that yet. I'll take 110 kilometers for now. We'll do this mid course adjustment home to get back to us. But let's just make sure that there's no weirdness as we cross the SOI boundaries. Jeb seems fine. 
Gonna dump the mob propellant in the pod. Okay, we just exited into Herbal SOI. Things do not seem to have changed. It makes a lot of gimbling sound. At least it's quiet enough, but it could be irritating. Okay, ignition. Okay, hopefully that's good. Um, well, let's get rid of that. Ah. Uh, okay, now it's we're in a situation where it's not showing me my orbit anymore. <laughs> See, it's not showing me my pass at Duna at all. We can see our periapsis here, 7,900, and a little bit more thrust gets us closer, so I will do that. Oh, now we're getting further away. I'll just fix that once we get into Duna SOI. On we go. Okay, radial in. We're polar. Which is sort of alright. I haven't noticed any power draw at all. Okay. Did a thrust to pull the periapsis down. Okay, 80 ish kilometers. And let's get close. Ike and Duna. Music intensifies. Oops, no, I didn't want game unpause, uh, pause or unpause. Let's uh, focus here. We'll manually get into orbit here because we have the Delta V. I believe we have the Delta V. Part ineffective, lack of solar exposure again. And capture. Now, one thing I want to do is make sure we land at a good place in daylight. Uh, so, we'll continue burning. Well, that periapsis should bring us into the atmosphere. We'll see what job the atmosphere does. We'll have to decouple from the poodle stage, of course, but we'll let the poodle stage do some slowing down for us. Holding retrograde would be just fine if it can do it. There are time warp restrictions, and from what I saw, the time warp restrictions actually apply in the tracking station. So you can't go away from your vessel and then time warp in the tracking station at a higher rate. And music intensifies. So keep that in mind. I tried that, and it still enforced the time warp restrictions in the tracking station. And here I really wish I had my joystick working, because trying to pilot this thing with keyboard is going to be annoying. As if I don't tip over enough already with the joystick. Well, slowing down alright so far. Auto ground. Yeah, I believe it. Okay, I'm gonna start using some poodle power. Ground looks good. Okay, I'm gonna dump the poodle stage now. Okay, staging. I don't know if that worked out. Oh boy. I'm not feeling the thrust here. It doesn't it didn't decouple. No.
they seem to be activated. Uh oh. Um. Decouple. It's not decoupling. Oh. I killed Jeb again. I killed Jeb again. But I think it was a bug. Because I think we should have decoupled. Now you'll have to review the video and tell me. Whether it was a bug that killed Jeb. Or whether I killed Jeb. I'll let you decide. A level breaking does not seem like... I mean I was hoping that it would the lower stage would sort of cushion our blow and you know the, the, the Kerbal Space Program one thing um yeah well we're gonna have to try this again but maybe somewhat differently we did have a decoupler there okay I didn't forget the decoupler you know that we had a fairing and a decoupler but something went horribly wrong so was it a bug you tell me anyway with this first attempt to land on Duna and return we have been unsuccessful, and by tradition, we have killed Jeb. But Jeb will return to us, and we will try again. So anyway, that was the first taste of Kerbal Space Program 2. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.